Thank you very much for this introduction and thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to present a, a few aspects uh, about the colors of uh, beetles. I'm currently working in the field of twisted uh, liquid crystals and they have such uh, molecular structure, rod-like molecules without positional order, but an orientational order. And the association of, with success of order and disorder is the main salient feature of the states of matter that we name liquid crystals. And there is a helical structure in a direction perpendicular to the long axis of these molecules due to the presence of chiral molecules. And this uh, medium has some property to selectively reflect the light and we will see the, the results for beetles. The technical name is a cholesteric liquid crystal structure because it was discovered in 1988 in cholesterol esters extracted from the root of a carrot. So you must know that there is a direct relationship, friendship between a carrot and mobile phone. Practical use, you, 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 you know them, for example, due to the fact that uh, the helix maybe the pitch of the helix may be tuned with the temperature or pressure. They have been used as temperature and pressure sensors uh, in reflecting screens to, to display simple information. Cosmetology, very huge market. Anti-counterfeit logo. Uh, the 20 here is uh, shifted from green to blue uh, with ob oblique incidence is due to the angle in the Braglow. And also uh, innovative uh, application for future, like uh, smart windows, reflective smart windows, for which we have only prototypes actually, because the, the, the helix of the cholesteric structure may be untwisted with an electric field. So it means that you may play between uh, two uh, different states, broadband reflective state and transparent state, so you can tune the solar and light energy, so to save energy. So to, uh, maybe for the future we will have such windows. But importantly, the cholesteric structure is a recurring design in animal and plant kingdoms under in vivo and uh, in vitro conditions as a fluid, soft, and fully solid materials. It is the main message of uh, a review paper that I have published a couple of years ago. Uh, it concerns uh, all the major biopolymers, no life without liquid crystals. It's the case of the organization under some circumstances of DNA and also chromatin, collagen, it is the, the case of the organization of osteons in the human uh, compact bone, collagen in fish scales also, silicant here. Cellulose with the organization uh, in these iridescent fruits and leaves. And chitin, it's a case of uh, crustaceans and insects, the topic of the day. And it must be said that uh, liquid crystal displays arrived on Earth millions of years ago, but they were not uh, brought by aliens, but by beetles. Here you have example of, of fossil uh, beetles, uh, 40 and 50 million years old, as found in uh, Germany, and they, they, are, they have kept their structural colors. But to display what? So maybe it's like with the vivid colors, it uh, it's means for the insect to send a warning message to predators, do not eat me, I'm toxic. 
but also to facilitate, facilitate the escape uh, because the fact that it seems that the fact that the color is changing due to, due to the angle uh, for the beetles allows uh, it to escape in an easier way when he has to when he, he, it, meet, it, it meets a, a predator. So maybe it's survival purposes. But in fact, there are many insects uh, which own a tessellated carapace uh, with uh, bumps, pits, indentation, pixels, stripes, spots, and patches. And little is known on the physical properties of the geometric variation and the biological function are still in debate. Let's have a look on, uh, on a scarab beetle named Christina Gloriosa. We, we have investigated uh, the property recently in my research team. And uh, the, the cuticle of this uh, beetle is made with uh, two different stripes, silver and green stripes. And the silver stripe is in fact a broadband mirror from the visible to the infrared spectrum. And if we have a look uh, on the green stripe, it is a, a very beautiful network of contiguous polygonal cells. And it's interesting to investigate the map of the reflected light intensity with wavelengths. And here uh, we have used for that uh, confocal mi microscope coupled to a spectrometer. And uh, we have divided here the, 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 cart the, the map of the reflected light into 20 uh, channels for wavelengths. And what we see is that in the blue part of the visible spectrum, the light is mainly focused into a ring. And then uh, it becomes a very brilliant spot in the orange or yellow part of the visible spectrum. And at the end, from the end of the visible spectrum up to the near infrared spectrum, it's a continuum which is reflected. So we can speak about wavelength-dependent smart micromirrors for these beetles because the optical response is adapted to the wavelengths. It's a pattern reflection in the visible spectrum with high selectivity and a non-pattern and non-selective reflection in broad infrared. And if we have a look on the, on the the organization of the cross-section of the chitin fibers. Here you have a, a cross-sectional view as observed by transmission electron microscopy for a, a couple of polygonal cells. And here you have a striated uh, structure. So the chitin is here. And you are observing the cholesteric helix by the slice. So the periodicity of the twist is directly, I mean the pitch, is directly related to the distance between two identical lines. And from the top of the cuticle to the bottom, you have a pitch gradient. The helix is continuously uh, changing, and it is in, uh, it, it is, it, the pitch is increasing, and you have no uh, structural discontinuity. So it means that it is a single layer. So we can uh, talk about possible uh, functions that uh, we, we, we can think of for this uh, cuticle. First function is for, for the upper part of the, of the cuticle. It's optical communication, sexual communication and selection, social signaling, recognition with conspecifics or intraspecies communication. It means that it is in that part that you have seen the different patterns for light reflection in the visible spectrum. Uh, so, and uh, there are a lot of, as you know, there are a lot of insects and beetles uh, which have uh, uh, tessellated carapaces. And for the lowest part, so it's less, less organized because it's just due to, you have the same thing for uh, lobsters, for example. Uh, there, there are less minerals in the lowest part because the cuticle does not need to, 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 to be resistant against the shock. But the pitch in that part is in the infrared, so maybe we can talk about infrared thermoregulation. And into a single layer, it's very, very interesting to, to say it. 
and it is maybe it is for this the success of such a structure with the pressure of evolution maybe it's an interesting hypothesis uh, it's due to the fact that to adapt you just need to to tune the pitch and not to change of materials with different optical indices and uh, if I add the second layer, it is the wax layer, it is the, the just in contact with the exterior, so it, it acts less like a barrier against desiccation and uh, also some hydrophobic properties. But importantly, uh, pheromones are there, so we can even talk about, after optical communication and thermoregulation, chemical information maybe. So as a single uh, concluding sentence, I would say that uh, these carapaces are fascinating and, and very beautiful, but uh, uh, several hypotheses are available, but the complete role of light reflection by the cholesteric liquid crystal uh, cuticle of insects still needs to be elucidated. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, something else. Are there uh, questions? Come on. <laughs> you may have uh, some. Uh, yeah, yeah go ahead. Excuse me. Uh, there are many, it, it is very frequent in fossil record of insects that you have um, such color preserved. Uh, even it is present in, um, in some odonata from the lower Cretaceous, which, which are pyritizide. So um, I always wonder how the colors could be, these physical colors could be still there, in fact. Because, because the, the cuticle was completely modified. It was replaced by iron, in fact, in this, uh, in this odonata. In the um, Cenozoic insects, beetles, or things like this, there are still the, kit the kitten, but um, how can so it the, work? The, your question is how, how to can explain it physically <laughs> yeah. why this color has preserved. So first, these fossils have, have been uh, found in very specific con conditions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but it's not pigmental colors. If yeah. it was pigmental colors, uh, there was bleaching. So it means that the organization due to the helix is, is kept because, uh, you know, the, the reflection is due to the but, periodicity. But and the helix are not there? Sorry? The helix are preserved? Ah, the helix has, is preserved, yes. Okay. Um, the helix is not present in all beetles. Sometimes you have just layers without twist. It, for example, for the butterflies, it's the case. At my knowledge, there is no twist. But uh, there are ref reflection colors. So physical colors, it is because it, it's not chemical colors, but physical colors yeah, yeah, that they are preserved. If for chemical colors, you have only trace of difference of coloration, brown or dark or yeah. pale. But for physical, the preservation of the helix themselves is surprising. Yeah, but it's a solid uh, material, fully solid. It okay. Was it <laughs> in the caverna that they were found, these fossils? Okay, second um, question. So you, you referred to, I mean, the purpose is, is unclear, etc. This assumes a selection. I mean, somehow throughout your, your talk, you, you, tr you try to explain the preservation of these patterns through functionality, through some selection pressure. But could it be that this is actually a spandrel somehow, meaning that the selection pressure is completely somewhere else, perhaps on the architecture of the tissue, perhaps on the solidity or other aspects, and that the color and their patterns, given how massively diverse they seem to be, even between highly related species, um, are actually just secondary characteristics that, that, that don't themselves serve uh, a function. Yeah, yeah. Just, just yeah of course, you, you, we have to keep this hypothesis, you are right. It's like, a, not an artifact, but uh, in fact the consequence of something which, which is not directly related to to a function, to a function, yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you.